Hey, I'm Christian. And when I was in high school, I kind of messed up. It was really dumb. Uh, in fact, it was so bad that I'm not gonna tell you what it was. I didn't want anybody to know what happened because it made me feel embarrassed and really like a hypocrite. So eventually, I ended up telling my small group leader and he said that Jesus doesn't just love parts of me, but he loves all of me. I learned that he loves me no matter how badly I mess up. And it really surprised me, but I felt so relieved. Listen, I get it. None of us wants everybody knowing our business, but I needed somebody to know my whole story, including what I've done, because it's not just a mistake or a memory. It's personal. One time, I was with my friends riding our bikes around town when we decided to kick over trash cans on the way to the park. It was all fun until we were crossing the bridge to the Civic Center and BAM! Everything went black. My ears were ringing. I turned around and two grown adults just hit me in the head with a basketball. And it almost knocked me out. They told me to come pick up their trash cans and I was all butthurt and upset about just getting hit in the head with a basketball. So I said something back that I shouldn't have said and then they started to throw baseballs and started chasing us. So I rode my bike as fast as I could to the skate park because I knew that I needed to hide. And here's something you already know. When you and I do something we know we shouldn't, we all have the same immediate reaction. We hide. Here's what I mean. Maybe you lied about who was at a party and promised it was only yourself and a friend that were gonna be hanging out. You kept secrets in your Snapchat and pray that they stay in your DMs and never accidentally get posted. It's all a form of hiding. And this isn't just a you thing. This isn't just a teenager thing. This instinct to hide our failures is an, is an everybody thing. Every adult you know has our own way of hiding when we make mistakes. We all do it and we all have since the beginning of time. In fact, maybe you know that very first humans named Adam and Eve made the very first mistake and their very first reaction was to hide from God. Yeah. It's a thing that we all do. And like those very first humans, we all have a tendency to not just hide from our teachers, our social media followers, or our parents, but to hide from God as well. And we might have a pretty good reason. Maybe you grew up hearing stories about God being angry and God destroying or punishing people, and you learned early on to keep your distance. Or maybe like me, it was more subtle than that. Maybe you grew up hearing God is love but his love felt more like a sliding scale. He loved you more when you were good, but you weren't, so he was disappointed and angry and distant. However you think about it, by the time we're in high school, most of us have a pretty solid idea that however God reacts when we mess up isn't good for us. So we hide, we show up less, we speak up less, we pray less, and we hide from God. It's easy to talk about God's love in theory, but when we've messed up, things get personal and it just feels different. For the past few weeks, we've been looking at the life of a guy named Zacchaeus. And this one interaction he had with Jesus, Jesus was pretty much famous for being the Messiah, but Zacchaeus was also famous, but for being the chief tax collector. Talk about wanting to hide from someone. Zacchaeus is someone you wanted to hide from. But Jesus saw through what people saw him as and called him from the tree and invited himself over for dinner. Now, the crowd of people probably thought that they deserved to be having dinner with Jesus, not some sinner like Zacchaeus. But the best part of the story happened when Zacchaeus came out of the tree. Jesus called his name, knowing full and well exactly what he did for a living. And it was up to Zacchaeus to decide whether or not he would have accepted the love Jesus was giving in that moment. He had messed up pretty badly, and he knew that. Luke 19 sets up the story like this. When Jesus passed by and called Zacchaeus out in love, Zacchaeus accepted it. Time after time in the Bible, we see Jesus constantly seeking those who mess up and extending love and grace. Even knowing all that Zacchaeus had done, Jesus refused to hold it against him. Jesus looked at the worst thing Zacchaeus had done and realized that there was a great opportunity to destroy the feelings of shame or even guilt that Zacchaeus might have had and had been living with. 
Another guy in the first century, the Apostle Paul, most likely knew this story as well. He met Jesus face to face and spent a ton of time with people who knew Jesus as well. I think that's why Paul writes this in a letter to some of the earliest Jesus followers in Rome. Did you hear that? Nothing. Here's what that means for you. God's love is not a sliding scale or dependent on how good we think we are or how bad we think we are. Even if it did cause a permanent situation or even if we kept doing it or if we said the last time was going to be the absolute last time but really it wasn't the last time and we did it again. Even if, you know, fill in the blank with whatever you like. He knows we will fail. He knows we won't get it right every time. And even with this knowledge of us, he still loves us. Because of Jesus, God does not hold our past mistakes or future failures against us. In other words, it's the truth. God doesn't look at us differently just because we mess up. God loves us no matter what. You may look at me and say, well, that's great, but you have no clue what I've done. And I'm scared to admit what I've done. And even worse, what I may think about doing. Hey, yeah, same. I mean, look at me. I didn't live a perfect life. But think about what scripture says and what it means. If we know we can't outrun or outmeasure God's love, what would that change about how personal we thought he was? Jesus in this moment is a glimpse of God's love, not for just Zacchaeus, but for us as well. We sometimes look at how badly we might have messed up and disqualify ourselves from God's love. But what can we learn from what happened to Zacchaeus and his response is that even with what we've done, God still wants to be with us. Through Zacchaeus, I have personally realized that I can trust God with not just parts of me that do right, but also the parts of me that do wrong. Sometimes we allow ourselves to live in the guilt and shame of one, two, or maybe even more than that, a few messed up situations or a few messed up things that we've done. We judge ourselves and think, God will never forgive me for this. You have a choice, just like Zacchaeus had a choice that day in the tree. You can either stay in the tree and refuse to accept the love that God gives you unconditionally, or you can choose to believe that God's love is for you, no matter what. Here are two things you can do to begin to grasp how big and wide and deep and extraordinary God's love is for you. The first thing is to name it. Name whatever it is you feel is separating you from God. A secret, a hurt, taking advantage of a situation, your anger, whatever it is, name it, write it on a piece of paper, tell a trusted adult, scream it at the top of your lungs while driving down a highway, whatever it is, be honest with yourself about what scares you the most about your biggest mistake. The second biggest thing you can do is confess it. God is big enough to handle the worst and the best of our lives. Talk to God about how this past failure makes you feel and ask him to show you in your everyday life how he sees you. I know it has changed my perspective asking him to do that. And then accept that Jesus loves you. And that is a fact you can never change. Even though you may go through seasons where you feel more distant from God, I know that I do. Despite you might have felt or what you might have done, there's nothing that can separate you from God's love. But the other thing I want us to think about, who did you react more like in the story? Were you a person who was quick to point out the flaws of others? Or were you like Jesus and are quick to show mercy? Every single one of us has a tax collector inside of us. But each of us are also made in God's image and can choose to operate like Jesus did when interacting with Zacchaeus. Just as we are not defined by our greatest failures, neither is anyone else. Living in faith means we are willing to be courageous and trust God with our full self, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Every fragment, every broken piece, every lie, every judgment, every insecurity, everything. There is right and there is wrong in the world, but that does not have to define us. 
What defines us is the love of Jesus. Just because we don't understand how God can love us or anybody else, even with our brokenness, doesn't mean that love doesn't exist. It's maybe hard to believe, but it doesn't make it any less real. This week, remember that God loves you and likes you and is with you no matter what.